All right, so let's talk about network forensics. So here's a few tricks. Now the first one is not actually networking, but something to mention. You can take the RAM from a process, and this is what the attackers did who stole credit cards from uh, Target, I think. So you can do this with just Windows tools. So if you go into Task Manager, you can see um, processes and the usernames and such, you can see Task Manager. And the main thing here is to find the process ID. So if you um, get proc dump, a Windows Sys internal tool, proc dump lets you dump the memory from the process by knowing the process ID. So instead of getting a huge file of all the memory, which might be like four gigabytes, you get a smaller file, like 320 megabytes of just one process. And you can analyze it with various tools, including a Mandiant tool. Um, but what I did here is just look with HXD, just with a raw hex viewer to see what's in there. And you can see that the URLs of websites you've been visiting are just there in the memory of your process. Now, a few years ago at Hope, I gave a talk where I talked about stealing passwords from the memory of browsers. And that's ridiculous. That shouldn't be possible. And most browsers have now updated that, pros that passwords are not just unencrypted in the RAM anymore, but a lot of other information is. And a lot of other products still do store sensitive data right in the RAM. And of course, the payment, car, uh, payment terminals, point of sale terminals at Target did store credit card numbers in the RAM. And that's what the attacker did. They put scrapers on the machine that stole the credit card numbers from the RAM and exfiltrated them. And one big issue there is that it's very hard to exfiltrate them. Uh, in a properly designed corporate network, the sensitive data does not have a direct connection to the internet, and you have to hop from server to server and package it and try to hide it and mix it in the normal traffic, and it really is quite a chore to sneak your loot off the network after stealing it, and that's an uh, important defense strategy. Anyway, uh, the next thing I want to talk about is network forensics. So you've got VirusTotal and Wireshark are common tools for this. And there's a nice repository of malware traffic samples online, traffic analysis exercise. Uh, so you can go to this website and just download some traffic of all different types. So I got a sample here. And you can just send a packet capture file right up to VirusTotal, which is nice. It used to only be files, but now it does packet captures too. And it will detect C. If it finds anything, it runs it through Snort and it runs it through Suricata. So you can do a lot of malware analysis without actually installing any tools yourself. You can just use cloud servers that will run those tools on it. So it will find all the DNS requests it made. So some of them are innocent things like Bing and Adobe, but others are going to suspicious sites that might be the malware command and control center. And, um, here it found a network trojan and an HTTP file inclusion attempt. And you can then look in Wireshark. You can look at the packets one by one and see how they work. Um, this is a manual process. Wireshark does not have the ability to detect suspicious traffic directly, but it lets you see exactly what's in there. And so there are some, uh, you can also look at PHP requests and find the PHP uh, get requests, and then see what's in there. You can also recover the downloaded files directly in Wireshark. So there's some simple challenges you can do here to practice uh, using Wireshark. Another useful tool is Packet Total, which is of course like Virus Total, but specifically designed for network traffic. And so you download this malicious sample and then send it up to Packet Total. And Packet Total will do a similar sandbox kind of automated analysis where it runs it in some kind of uh, virtual machine on their server, and then it tells you, here's Suricata DNS finding uh, suspicious DNS traffic. Here's um, a alert sub message telling you where it went, connecting you back to VirusTotal for more information about it, which detects some of the traffic contains a known piece of malware, which is detected by various antivirus engines. And then it looks and tells you what registry keys are set. So you don't even have to spin up a virtual machine and infect it and see what it does. They will do all that for you. And you can see what keys were made. And of course, run keys are one of the most common artifacts from malware 
because a run key is a file that will automatically launch every time the machine restarts. So it's one of the simplest ways to attain persistence where uh, you re retain control of a machine even after it restarts. And so you can then take the executable files that were in that network traffic and you can download the files and get a copy of them without even running Wireshark locally right from the cloud. And then you can analyze that file. So you can get the file names of all the files that were translated over the network. And there's a series of challenges here. So you can practice that. If you want to go more deeply into Wireshark, then just like Snort, there's a challenge at the end that goes in more deeply. And that is here in the networking section. This is something I got from a CTF a couple of weeks ago. Um, there's Wireshark here where you analyze a couple files I made with just an FTP login. This is the kind of thing we do at DEF CON at the Wall of Sheep. There's a password you can steal from FTP traffic and there's HTTP traffic where you can steal a password and steal the files that were transmitted. And then there's a more realistic um, APT capture. Here's a PCAP that came from a capture to flag from Red Team CTF uh, last month. And this has encrypted data an encryption tool used to create the data. You can find the actual file that is the encryptor and uh, you can find a key and decrypt encrypted communication in Wireshark and you can find a port knocking attempt and so on. So you can practice finding all those things with Wireshark and that uh, gives you some practice with network forensics where you're analyzing network traffic and finding the malicious activities. So let me put this one up.